custom vacuum chamber fail? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alright guys, if you're wondering why I didn't upload a video last week, I wanted to make a custom vacuum chamber. And to do that, I wanted to put bigger things into it. I didn't want to buy one that was like 8 inches by 8 inches. It was just pretty teeny. Most of them are, and for the bigger ones, like the pot ones, you can only see in through the top. So, I decided, you know, for a video, I'd make a vacuum chamber. So, in my attempt to make a vacuum chamber, I failed miserably, as you can see by the wood and everything else. Apparently, you can't do it with quarter inch. Right here. I thought it would be good. It is strong, sturdy, but it just wouldn't work. It is junk. I just made a glorified leaking fish tank at this point. I'll probably end up resealing everything up and filling with water and blowing it up. Yeah. So, this is what my vacuum chamber failed. This is why I didn't get a video up last week. Because I was working on this, I expected this to come up, but it failed, it failed, it failed, it failed. And I tried to brace it with wood, I tried to do everything, I tried to massively silicone it, now it's just a fucking gloopy ass mess. So, got rid of the quarter inch, got me some one inch, right here. I think this might possibly work. So on this section, we're gonna make a custom vacuum chamber. You're gonna wanna check this out. All right, what we're gonna do is cut one inch in, more like this, and half an inch down out of this one inch sheet, all the way around, so I can have the others slide in right on top of it, and when I got vacuum, it's gonna be pulling against it, and it should hold up pretty well. I mean, half an inch of acrylic is pretty tough stuff. So, that's what I said about the quarter inch and it failed miserably. And on the end caps, what we're gonna do is take the end cap right here. Sorry, I'm not sure if you can see me draw that square. And sitting up, this would be up and this would be down. We're gonna take do the same thing on these sides right here. So when I put the side panels on, the longer side panels, they have something to butt up against. And it should provide enough, basically enough, it should provide enough support so it doesn't implode on itself like this fucking piece of shit did. Pardon my French, I'll edit that out. Anyway, so that is our plan for today. We're gonna try to build a custom vacuum chamber and get it out to you guys. And I'm gonna be doing it with silicone and recently I found out about something called Weld On 4 for this, which would probably be a lot better idea. But the beauty part is if I do this with silicone and I don't like it, I can always remove silicone and then I could do weld on for it. But for this part, part of this video, we're gonna be putting this thing together with silicone one. All right, let's get at it. Just in case anybody wanted to see this piece of junk vacuum chamber that I tried to fix. I wanted it large and clear. That's why I'm making a custom one. Because a custom one this size that I wanna make, which is 12 inches tall, 18 inches wide, 12 inches deep, big enough to fit a whole bunch of stuff is like three grand. I mean, I tried wood braces, I tried everything, and it still just sucks it right in. It is a piece of junk. Uh, that's why I didn't get a video last week. I even had a vacuum gauge set up. I got a nice rubber silicone gasket and uh, five days worth of work down the drain. All right, let's get to building the better one other than this piece of junk. All right, guys, I'm gonna take this. Little handy dandy square right here. I'm gonna take this handy dandy square. I'm gonna basically set my pen on an inch and keep with it. There we go. That line works nicely up along there. Let's get the other side, back side, and then we're gonna set our saw blade to half an inch depth, and we're gonna just start eating away at this, and hopefully. Hopefully, <laughs> this is gonna work out. I didn't buy enough for a screw up, which is kind of a mistake. All right, and done. Start cutting and trimming. All right, here we go. We wanna take the top of the saw. There's one inch, we want half inch. 
put on our handy nifty difty jigger. When you do this, you want to measure to the outside of the blade. So, the outside of the blade, right here. Oops, sorry, pardon me. You want to measure to the outside of the blade, just under. If you can get it just to the outside of the blade, because you got to remember the thickness you're going to take off on your blade as well. Make sure she's all nice and taut. Double measure. Measure twice, cut once, right? Here's how we're going so far. I don't think you guys need to see me just constantly groove out every corner. I'm going about, let's say, it's not quite half an inch, three eighths, eighths deep. So, I'll get back to you after this bottom plate's all done. Plus, cam gets out of the way. All right, guys, we're done end stripping. I ended up only taking off like three eighths of an inch just to give it that good little lip. So you guys can see. I'm not sure if it's even focusing. Focus! Dang it. All the way around. It's a bit rough. I can clean that up real quick. Some sandpaper or a file. So, now we have this cut out on all four corners. This is end up going to do. I set our nice big end caps on here like this. Boom. It's going to provide us a lot of pack force in so when we get that big strong vacuum and all this atmospheric pressure pushing on the outside in it's going to have this lip on the bottom to grab onto and now we got two end pieces i got to cut them down they will go here like this but if you notice i don't fit let's see if i can get this on the camera you notice they don't fit because that one has to be butted up to there so what we got to do is take um, let's see, about a half inch off of each one of these depends on how much I take off on the bottom grind like this just like I just, more the bevel like I just did with the other one so it depends if I take off half an inch I'm going to need to take off an inch on this because it's going to be half an inch each side so I need to take off one inch on this if I decide to just do three eighths like this, then I only need to do six. Takes off six eighths of a six eighths of an inch off of this one. So we are coming along, baby. Yeehaw! All right, just like the other ones, um, we are going to do the end caps first because I want to make sure everything lines up nicely and I got everything peachy keen. So the end caps are only taking off two sides because the bottom part is going to butt up with this part. So we don't have to do that. So, all right. I'm going to start working on this. We'll come back once I get both of these done. I also got to chop them down to 12 inches because that's how high it's going to be. It's basically going to be a mirror image of this one. I bought all the same stuff because I want to put some large stuff in it. So I've got to cut this down. Make it 12 inches tall, so this will be 12 inches tall. We got 18 inches wide, 12 inches deep. We should be able to fit some really big stuff in this vacuum chamber. I mean, come on, look at it. We got it. Come on, guys. Wish me luck. Well, you're gonna see this whether I fail or not, because I got to get working on my uh, liquid nitrogen generator, and that's gonna take me three solid weeks of building to get done. So. I gotta get this done, and hopefully during three solid weeks of building, I'll do like a three part on this um, liquid nitrogen generator. And hopefully have this done, do some vacuum experiments in between. And I'm gonna build a custom superheated forge too after this. Yeah, all right, let's get at it. So about my light, guys. One of my lights died, so it's me. Anyway, just show you, I finished both end pieces. Cut on both sides, right here. 
So you can see towards this back one, it's gonna butt up like this. Right here. So, like if this was one of these plates right here, untrimmed, it's gonna be able to hold against the bottom and the top. So when the vacuum sucks in, it's gonna be pressing on all sides and hopefully I can get it to cancel itself out. Cause that is one of my concerns is, with my last one is I was unable to cancel everything out and it just sucked it and broke. So this should be extremely sturdy the way it is. I gotta take these down and cut them down. Let's see, where's the... So right now, what we're gonna do is measure. Cause I've been working really, really, really hard trying to get this done. I'm trying to get another video out. But you can see how these overlap right here. That's why I'm gonna need to take this one down. So when this other one butts up on this side, it'll... So when the other one butts up on this side, it'll line up. That's why I gotta take them down. So. Let's take this down and we'll get back to the next part and hopefully, hopefully get it glued tonight, be able to get it up and test it tomorrow so you guys actually get to see the custom vacuum chamber. Ah, right, here's your fingers crossed. We can do this. We can do it. God, I hope we can. I don't know if you guys can see that, but measure twice, cut once. Oh yeah, that is smooth. Yeah. Alright, now we got everything cut except for the sidewalls. What it did is I got them clamped up. I got the overhang measured right now. So I need to take off this much, which is about two and a half inches. Alright guys, it looks like we're pretty much done. As you can see how I overlap these. So, let's see if it'll focus right here. So when I got pressure pushing in this way, it's pushing on this and it shouldn't come apart. I got pressure pushing straight in across that and they're all grooved in like that. And the bottom is the same exact way. So any pressure coming up, it's pushing on all of these and all of these, all of this is back and the side ones can all push against this. So it theoretically should be enough to hold the vacuum. So, I'm gonna silicone it all up and let it dry overnight and hopefully, hopefully I'll have a vacuum chamber tomorrow. All right, what I'm doing is I'm peeling the protective coating just away from the edges. That way I don't sink it under a sea of silicone. All right, here she is, she's siliconed up. Her clamps on her, she's holding nice. Got a silicone beater on the top. I'm going to let this get a little tacky, kind of firm up a little. I am going to put uh, soap all around the edges so it won't stick and hopefully it will just stick to this end. I'm going to set it on it, I'm not going to clamp it down, just the weight of it should do it overnight. And tomorrow I drill some holes, plug in some gauges, and I got a badass custom vacuum chamber. Alright guys. Wish me luck. Hi guys, it's the next day. I got my silicone gasket up. Only problem is, over here, there's a slight indentation I'm gonna probably have to fix, which is gonna take another day, so I probably won't get to test it today, but I can't push that together, so this one should hold up. Other than this little imperfection, the gasket turned out wonderfully. It's just a silicone gasket with um, the top having bunch of dish soap rubbed on it. Now I can get rid of this piece of junk right here. I already pulled off the vacuum gauge and the valving. I got some more valving, a relief valve and all that other stuff. So that is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna plumb her in. All right, we're gonna tap this up high for the valving, right up here, pretty dang high. Um, the reason behind that is if I have anything in the vacuum chamber that bubbles, I can have a lot of room. So I don't have to sit there, stop, let in air or anything. I can just straight go into it. All right, we're gonna take a half inch NPT pipe thread and we're gonna give her a thread.
nice and tight. I'm gonna move it up. Open. There we go. We got our suction all screwed in. Now we need to do our relief valve towards the back and our vacuum gauge up on top. And that should be it. And we have a ready vacuum chamber. That's all it takes. All right. I'm not gonna bore you guys with me drilling another hole and drilling a hole and screwing them in and doing just what I did with this. Same steps as this took. All right, I'll see you guys when it's done. All right guys, here's a moment of truth. Got my discharge, my suction, my vacuum gauge. Hoping for no leaks, I'm hoping this doesn't implode. The last one imploded at about 14, negative 14, it imploded. So, let's hope this one doesn't. If anything, it'll be a destruction video. Very sad destruction video. Okay, it has not imploded, but let me show you something. I'm gonna need to brace it. I didn't figure that. Look at the top how it's bowed in. So I may need to do a cross brace or something for this. But she's holding. I guess my vacuum pump will only do 22. Still holding. Uh, I think I just got a weak vacuum pump. I got this vacuum pump on sale at a uh, parking lot sale for Harbor Freight on 40 bucks because that's all I can afford. It's a two stage too. Ready? Watch the flex. That is how much it moved. So, I, I'm gonna need to brace this top. All right, guys. Yeah. I right, guess I hope you. I right, guess I hope you liked and enjoyed this video on how to make a vacuum chamber. I plan on putting some stuff into it, and there's really two reasons why I made a vacuum chamber. There's a bunch of vacuum chambers around, and videos all over people doing stuff. But a lot of it I want to try on my own because I think by changing a few of the parameters I can get them to work better. And plus, um, while I'm building this liquid nitrogen generator, I can do some liquid or some vacuum chamber videos and get, still get a video out every week. So that is really my two reasons behind it. It's because I want to see stuff in a vacuum chamber and I want to, well, get a video out every week and this liquid nitrogen generator build uh, I plan on running into problems, so that's why. I mean, if I didn't run into problems, weak, I'd have it down, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have problems, I'm gonna have to keep readjusting stuff. So that is why, just in case stuff fails and stuff has it, I got extra time, I put out a video, and I can keep working on this liquid nitrogen generator. All right, thank you guys. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.